It's about 10.20 on June 29th. Tonight I had the opportunity to see The Rape of Europa, which is a documentary about the Nazis and how they stole and took art and destroyed different cultures in Europe during World War II, and what the Allied forces did to retrieve and save what they could. This is less of a review of the movie, the documentary, as it's more of a ramble, a jumbled collection of my thoughts upon watching it. In my mind, The Rape of Europa is important for everybody, not just art majors and not art history majors, but for everybody because it shows how culture was affected and it gives a different type of emotional way to connect to the atrocities of World War II. What happened to the Jewish people and all the countries that the Nazis went into during World War II is horrible. It was horrible. And there are a lot of people still affected by it and our global society and our global economy. And everything is, you know, a lot of people are still dealing with the issues that happened. And it's a different thing to see how cultures were affected and what people thought. Hitler's reason for taking different art, for wanting to collect art, I wouldn't say is evil. Art is a status symbol, generally, so it's kind of easy to see why someone would want to have a vast and amazing art collection and to see why people would want to hold on to and be able to experience and see and interact with the greatest pieces that were created up to that point in time. But his methods were, you know, horrible. It was mostly theft. It was veiled as, you know, legal, but it wasn't legal. But it's not just taking cultures that is shown in the documentary. What's also shown is how cultures and identities were destroyed and completely disregarded from an art standpoint. For me, that gave me an emotional way into thinking about considering and acknowledging World War II and what happened by seeing just how terribly and ridiculously things were destroyed. When the Germans went into the Soviet Union, they destroyed Slavic creations because they considered the Slavic descent, they considered that to be, they considered it to be a degenerative culture. So they just destroyed things. What I liked about the documentaries, they had anecdotes from people who survived through the horrors that happened. They had anecdotes from people who addressed propaganda that was dropped when the US allies got to Italy they worked really hard in Florence to not destroy things they were attacking the train lines because they wanted to stop the Nazis from being able to take more pieces of art and you know arm themselves and other things and they had an incredibly small target that was really close to a lot of really important relics and museums. And seeing how the people responded, not just to the fact that they knew that the Allies were going to and had bombed Florence, but the fact that the Allies somehow miraculously only hit the train lines and none of the museums that were really close. I think in the documentary they said the space was somewhere along the proportions of I think maybe 2,000 feet long and about 400 feet wide, maybe 200 feet long. And it was an incredibly small target. It's amazing that they hit it and it was ridiculous. I went through a flood of emotions. I spent half the, move, half the documentary with my face kind of like this, with my eyebrows furrowed. I mean, not as bad as Natalie Portman's were during the Black Swan. I mean, her eyebrows never left this position. I mean, my eyebrows can't even do that. My eyebrows, you know, they kind of curl. Hers go like this, 
I spent the first half of the documentary with an expression like this because I hurt emotionally the idea that cultures were being attacked because of an ideological insane person who decided that because it wasn't Germanic it had to be destroyed. What was fantastic to see was how God, I can't remember the name of the foundation, it was the Roberts group I think. There were the uh, the groups, the Monument Men, not too long after American troops first landed in Italy, they were there with the troops to help work to protect people's culture. There are people who weren't soldiers with the soldiers, working to help keep buildings up to salvage what they could. What was abysmal was what happened in Pisa, Italy, where the Leaning Tower is. There was a really important there was a really important... This one's not the monastery. The monastery was somewhere else and that got destroyed, sadly. Unnecessarily. It's been rebuilt multiple times, but... The Germans weren't even in it. They were around it. That was a horrible, horrible accident. In Pisa, the Compensato... I'm saying this horribly, I'm sorry. The Compensato was accidentally destroyed the... When Pisa was bombed, the lead ceiling melted and all the frescoes on the walls melted and were destroyed. People have been working for the past 60 years to help restore these frescoes. They just melted and the paint just fell off the walls. It's so damn sad. I really enjoyed seeing this documentary. Not just because I'm an art major, and having taken a few art history courses, I had a different type of emotional connection to art history. But as a human being and seeing how cultures were just so disrespected and destroyed was amazing, actually. To hear a weird explanation for why these things were destroyed. But what was more amazing than that was the work that people did, did and have done and are doing and will be doing to help restore things. I was surprised by how many objects of Judaism were preserved by the Nazis when they would go through the the temples. They kept the ends off of the Torahs. They didn't melt them down and take the silver or the bells. They just kept them and they kept them in storage. And there's this guy working... I don't think he might be Polish. I'm not 100% where he's from. But with the objects that weren't just given to Jewish museums, he's working to find the families who these objects came from. And he's working to find their descendants so he can give people some things back. And that is just a ridiculously amazing and beautiful and fantastic thing that he's working on. This is a documentary I think I'd like to see again. Not just to go through the pain, because it was painful. I don't really cry at things, but I kind of almost cried just seeing how much art and how much human history was destroyed. I mean, going through my art history courses, I mean, we didn't just look at paintings or things. We kind of had an anthropology lesson. It was amazing to see the different things that were created and why. The buildings were gorgeous. There were some fantastic buildings destroyed. There's a big cathedral in Krakow, Poland. And it was just wrecked. It, the, the Nazis bombed it. And parts of the building survived. The, the tower for the building survived. But when, when the Polish people decided that they were going to try to fight the Nazis back, the Nazis had to meet, you know, when they made their way into Krakow, they hadn't completely destroyed the building, but they bore thousands of holes into it, into the foundation, so if they were ever pissed off at the Polish people, they could just destroy one of the greatest symbols of the city. And they did. There were photos, I think, of the restored building. Possibly they showed, they'd shown some of the original building and some older photos. Old architecture is fucking gorgeous. 
seeing all that hard work destroyed is ridiculous. Looking at the construction of old buildings, not just the cathedrals, I mean, I got really tired of looking at cathedrals during art history, but everything else, seeing Versailles, not that Versailles was addressed in this documentary, but think about my art history courses. Just seeing the types of things that people did to build these massive gargantuan buildings is amazing, and then seeing it destroyed is just so heartbreaking. I enjoyed the rape of Europa. If you want an interesting look and a different way to connect through to World War II and see how people were affected, not just Jewish people, not just peasantry, or people who I guess would be considered peasantry, but being able to see how people were affected on a cultural level and just how important these buildings were to them. I mean, buildings and the art are symbols of culture. They were glorious. They were gorgeous feats of human ingenuity. And it was just so sad to see them destroyed and torn apart for no good reason. All the sides had their faults. Um, I can't really say that all the sides had their good reasons for what they did. Because I'm not a Nazi sympathizer. But the extent of work that people did to save and protect things. Or to get retribution for their things that were attacked and destroyed. Was amazing. If you ever get the chance, sit down and watch this documentary. I think had I seen it sooner, and it's been out since at least 2006, I'd have a different way of thinking about World War II and I would have thought about it differently from a younger age than from how I think about it now. But having this type of cultural emotional connection to it and seeing people, how they try to survive and how they reacted when important symbols to them were destroyed just makes you think. Adios.